Hey, Jim. It got cold here last night and this morning. It got down to like 31 degrees. So all of a sudden, a few weeks ago, I'm building uh, ice transfer coolers. And uh, right now I'm thinking I need to go the opposite direction. So uh, how am I going to heat this uh, big shop building on the cheap? And uh, it's insulated already. So, of course, the go-to is the barrel stove. And I looked up barrels near me and I found a store called the Barrel Superstore in Greenville. Not Greenville, Greenville, South Carolina. So, I went there. Let me show you what I got. Yeah. Yeah. Look at these bad boys. So I got three of these guys, and it says that they originally contained lemonade. So I figure, how bad could that be? These barrels were cheap, and they have not been cleaned out or sterilized or anything like that. These barrels cost $22.50 each. And then they have a removable top, so we'll be removing this top in just a second. And then I got this one which is much thicker steel. It's way heavier than these. And it's called a fixed head, meaning that the top and the bottom are on there. They're not removable like those are. So I'm gonna have to pull these out. And this one has omega-3 fatty acid in it. And I looked that up and it's actually a uh, food supplement it's a, a a good thing it's like uh, there's a lot of omega-3 fatty acid in salmon so but i don't know if you can hear that but it's still slopping around in there so i'm gonna have to empty that out too but first off let's crack these three open and see what they look like inside i'm gonna be wearing safety goggles because who knows what fumes are going to come out of there Probably just lemonade, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. Oh, it's noisy. Okay. Here we go. Ooh. Okay. Don't smell anything too terrible. Oh. Hmm. That's not bad at all. It looks perfectly clean. Huh. I don't smell anything other than a little bit of paint. Huh. Maybe it was, uh, Oh, I don't know. Maybe they did clean it. I'm going to use this one for my wood stove because it's that so much thicker and heavier. So it should carry some heat a little better. So let me go get some tool to unscrew this and have a look-see inside. But first, let's have a look at this little kit that I bought. I got this at uh, the tractor supply store and it was sixty dollars mm. instructions that looked very thorough and there's our front plate huh. okay nice so it comes through, uh, it comes with some legs, cast iron, looks like all the hardware, and my little flu damper thing that's curved for the barrel. How hard could it be? I, I really love these things. I might have to go get more in there. The height is just really good for uh, like a work. Uh, level of a workbench, something like that. And you could cut them open and make uh, storage inside if you did like half barrels. 
oh, I don't know. There's lots of things that I can see wanting to use these for. And these heavier ones, I'm going to have to go get more of these because 20 bucks a piece. Come on. I could have this uh, really cool uh, stove. You can make one into a stove where you could actually cook right on the top here. Uh, I could make really cool barbecue out of it. I don't know. I might have to get a few more of these before I get too wound up, though. Let's see what's inside it. Okay. It um it smells well. It smells a little bit like uh almost like mineral spirits but in a weird way. Let me get a flashlight. All right, so I got my light on here. Yeah, not focusing, is it? There we go. Okay, it's uh, looks a little definitely got liquid at the bottom, not much though. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna pour this out and uh, we'll check it out when it's out. Huh. Okay. Omega-3 fatty acid. Pure omega-3 fatty acid uses. Here's a summary from WebMD. Findings show omega-3 fatty acids may help to lower blood pressure, reduce triglycerides, slow the development of plaque in the arteries, reduce the chance of abnormal heart rhythm, reduce the likelihood of heart attack and stroke, and more. So it certainly doesn't sound like it's toxic in any way. Uh, I guess I'm going to go ahead and save it. I'm going to bottle it up in these water bottles and uh, I'll play with it later. And, and it does not smell like uh, mineral spirits. It smells like, it smells like linseed oil. It's got that sort of a varnish, linseed oilish sort of a, an odor to it. So, and it is definitely oily, very oily. So I'm going to play with this and later maybe uh, I can use it as something. <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to figure out some. Maybe I can use it as fuel in a kerosene-type lantern? I don't know. Meanwhile, I'm going to bottle it up. So I ended up with about a gallon and three quarters of the Omega oil. I don't know. It says acid, but it's oil. Anyway, so what I'm going to do here is clean this drum out. And in order to achieve that, I'm going to put in some uh, laundry soap. And then I'm going to put in a bit of water and I'm going to use a pressure washer. And then I'm going to agitate it and roll it all around and tip it on its side and shake it all around. And then uh, do that probably a couple of times. And hopefully we'll get rid of most of the oil residue in there. <clears throat> and I just did a little research here. I went to this company's website. Oh, pardon my shadow. Sorry. I went to this company's website. And apparently this is some pretty high grade fish oil. So I tried to figure out how much it was worth. And what I figured out is with vast amounts of research on the internet, that barrel weighs about 190 or, or it contained 190 kilograms of that fish oil. And it sold for six thousand dollars just a little more than six thousand dollars the average price per 
kilogram is about $32. So a gallon of the fish oil, let's see here, make sure I got my numbers right. A gallon weighs three and a half kilograms. So my one and three quarter kilograms is, or uh, one and three quarter gallons weighs six uh, and an eighth kilogram. And at $32 per kilogram, that means I have $196 worth of fish oil out of a barrel I paid $20 for, assuming my math is correct. <laughs> now I've just got to figure out what it's good to use it for. I don't think I'm going to chance uh, ever using it for any sort of food products, but we'll have to see. Like I said, I'll play with it more later. I marked my little center point here, and then I also marked it right here. And that way I was able to locate the door on here. And you can see I marked the edge. It's kind of, there we go. You can see now. I have marked the edge very lightly with a Sharpie. And now I'm going to go get my angle grinder. And I'm going to cut the opening for the door. I'm not sure why, but I drilled a few vent holes before I start cutting. The bung uh, plug is out of this, so I've cleaned it real good. There really shouldn't be any uh, hazard of any sort of fire or anything like that while I'm cutting. Well, there we have it. That wasn't too hard. As long as you're using your safety goggles and your uh, earmuffs, because it's loud. I cleaned up the edge a little bit. You can see the inside of this thing. It's It's got uh, a little bit of grinding stuff stuck where there were water droplets, but otherwise, it's clean. I mean, there is no trace of any oil residue at all on the inside. So that... Uh, Rinse out worked pretty good and looks like I'm going to have to do it again because all that grinding debris down in the bottom is a little rough. But let's test fit the door. Okay, we got the door pretty much right where it's supposed to go. I might trim just a little bit more. I don't want to see any of the barrel steel sticking through at the edges. And then our vent here, it's all clear. It seems like an awfully small vent. But that's all right. I, I'm imagining at some point I am going to uh, have this thing draw the air into itself from outside my building. And that way it's not pulling my heated air into itself and then up the chimney. It's pulling cold air from outside into itself to make the fire go. And then all I get from it uh, is the heat and I don't lose heat going up the chimney. I think, I think that's how that'll work. So next I have to find my center point on the bottom down there. And I have to fit my damper assembly here. So I'm going to have to cut a hole for that. It's coming along. You can see here that I've got that part cut. I still have to drill all the holes and I put the legs on and you can see they're bolted on from inside. The ones back there, they were a little bit of a trick to get to. I was able to reach through the hole that I cut for the damper with this assemblage. <laughs> 10 millimeter bolts. Nuts. So I'm kind of thinking about maybe trying to rig up a secondary air inlet through this hole that will draw air in from outside that way i can choose either or i can or both if i need to to really get the fire going inside and outside i don't know i've never built a fireplace before but i'm thinking of putting cement in the bottom so i have a nice level, you know, not a lot, just a little bit there to give me a, a, a level surface. And then I'm going to put in some bricks. I found a bunch of bricks in the forest right near where my 1961 Willis Jeep CJ5 is. 
and uh, maybe we're gonna have to go up and get some bricks and and uh, maybe I'll start bringing back the CJ5 but that'll have to be another day so I'm gonna go ahead and bust out my uh, my uh, center punch so I can I'll mark where all the holes need to be drilled center punch them so we don't wander around with the drill bit and drill all the holes for all my mounting screws and I'll do that up here too and we'll go ahead and install I worked my way all the way around with a an eighth inch pilot hole bit and I used a little drop of oil in each of the divots before I began drilling and now I'm going to re-drill them I'll apply a little bit more oil and this will be the final size of the hole. Okay, got them all drilled in, got them all tightened up, and now the flue is open. I got a couple of pieces of uh, chimney pipe and a little cap piece. And now I'm gonna do the initial burn, and I'm hoping to burn all of this paint off that might be a little bit toxic. Okay, I just picked up some debris from around the house and that is a little piece of towel that i soaked in the fish oil that came in this barrel Hello. okay we're officially lit oops okay well i'm not going to worry about that we're officially lit. Here we go. Stand back, look out for toxic vapors. <clears throat> All right. There we go. Wonder how long it'll take to burn off the paint. Probably a long time. I'm going to leave the door open a little bit to improve the initial draft. And once it gets going, I'll close the door. Okay, the paint is starting to smoke, and it's only been about a minute. So stay, uh, you want to stay upwind of that. Weesh, that's what we're looking for. I'm trying to burn it real hot to get all this uh, nasty stuff burned off it. So I'm letting it go a little bit wild and a little bit too much ventilation and we're even getting some flames blasting clear up the pipe i'm gonna damp that down here pretty quick but i'm just trying to get rid of as much of this stuff quickly yeah the little labels on the side just burst into flames okay homemade wood stove so 20 bucks in the barrel 60 bucks in the uh, stove kit each one of those sections of pipe was 12 bucks at Lowe's, and then the cap piece is like $20 at Tractor Supply. I got more pieces of pipe and a couple of elbows, and once this thing is burned in a couple more times, I'm going to uh, keep it out here and burn all that paint off of it. I'll probably repaint it with high temperature paint, and then I got to go get some bricks and start building the platform. And, I'll show you when I actually install it in the garage. But there it is, working good. Thanks for watching. Seems to be burning perfectly. Almost no smoke. Water is almost boiling, and I've just got it balanced on uh, a, a disc rotor from <laughs> from the Honda, and it is cranking away. And you'll notice it's lined with bricks.